Well, hello everyone. This is Jason Zydema of ICMA. Today I have the privilege of speaking to Captain Kuba Szymanski, who is uh, Executive Director of In Intermanager and also a trustee at the TK Foundation. Uh, welcome, Captain Szymanski. Well, thank you very much for having me, Jason, and welcome everyone. Uh, how can I help you, sir? So, uh, Captain Szymanski, you've been deeply involved with uh, your members at Intermanager and in dealing with the challenge of coronavirus. And uh, um, I'd like to ask uh, first, can you describe uh, Intermanager? What do you do? How are you structured? And, and uh, um, what do you do for your members? Jason, absolutely, we'll do. But before we do that, can I just address your audience here and say thank you very much, guys. Uh, you are my ambassadors. And when I'm saying my, I mean seafarers, ship managers, owners. It, you are doing absolutely fabulous job. And you are seeing my seafarers far more frequently than I'm seeing them myself. myself. So really, really appreciate your work. And uh, we will try maybe through this uh, interview to help you as well to understand where do we come from, what do we do, and why it is so important for us to work together. Now, Jason, answering your question, Intermanager is the Association of uh, Ship Managers. Um, your audience will be very well aware that we've got two types or maybe even three types of ship managers. We've got in-house owners, third-party ship managers, and very often forgotten crew managers. And if you think about it, 90% of all seafarers are employed by crew managers nowadays. So it's a huge, huge, huge market, if you wish. And Intermanager is proud to represent those crew managers, very often ship managers as well. How we are structured? We've got a secretariat. I'm a secretary general. Uh, we are very, very lean. We all work from home, and we have been working from home for the last 10 years. We started 2010. We pride ourselves to be paperless, so there is absolutely no paper in Intermanager. All our things are done electronically. Uh, membership is around the world. You can go on our website and have a look. Uh, we are pretty thin in South America membership wise but otherwise i think we're everywhere and for your audience 35 percent of ship man uh, ship uh, ships around the world are managed by ship managers so we're talking about 35,000 ships being managed by the third party ship management and in-house um, um yeah we've got our president obviously Björn. Um, Björn is our president elected every two years Björn has been um president now for two terms and our AGM happens usually in October and um, ship managers you can also be a as uh, associate member and these are the companies which are working with ship managers so I believe that's my answer to your question so looking at all your membership uh, and especially dealing with the the, the the management at this very trying time what, what are the key challenges that your members are facing because of the coronavirus and uh, what are they doing? What are they trying to do about it? First one is support our crews on board. There is no doubt about that. We need to make sure that our guys on board of the ships are happy and safe, or maybe safe and happy. And that's what is taking a lot of time. And that's what wakes everybody in the middle of the night. How can we do that? And um, challenges? Well, Intermanager, together with 25 other organizations, and I'm very pleased to say that Jason is representing one of these organizations as well, so he's working on your behalf, guys. We are meeting once a week and we are sharing all our problems, challenges, solutions, positive message, negative message. So we are basically one big family. And I'm delighted to say that because there is quite a lot of big egos around the world, especially in shipping. But for some time now, four or five weeks, we have forgotten about them and we are working together. So I am every week, I'm hearing what Jason has to tell me about your problems. And uh, Jason is listening to problems of ICS, Beamco, Intertanko, Intertank, Intermanager, Intercargo, whatever. And surprise, surprise, 80% of all our problems are the same problems. Or maybe I shouldn't be uh, so problematic, I should say challenges here. So now we are working together to find out what would be the solution for that. And to answer your question, Jason, Intermanager is struggling big style with some of the local governments and port authorities, for example, because at the high level, when we meet with IMO, ILO, WHO, 
we are all singing from the same hymn sheet. We listen to each other and we are very keen to help. And then the problem starts because we are then going all to our respective members and we are trying to tell them what has been agreed and it takes ages. Imagine this, the decision in WHO is made then we need to do A, B and C. How to transfer that all the way to the border control? To Joe Bloke who is sitting in his booth in the, I don't know, uh, New York airport. How does he know what has been decided? Imagine how many barriers this message has to pass through. And there is, if the message is not very clear, then interpretation comes in. And then we see a lot of interpretations which we have to uh, unmystify and so on and so forth. So that would be our biggest challenge. I can go deeply into the answer immediately and say, for example, the biggest showstopper at present is how to make sure that our seafarer who arrives on board is quarantined properly. And now, are we supposed to quarantine seafarers for 14 days on board upon arrival? Or can we do that in hotel for two, three days, test him, make sure that he is clean so he can go on board? Without this particular showstopper, we will not be able to implement crew changes. And that is what stops us, or maybe this is what we are now focusing on, making a lot of effort, pulling resources to overcome this issue. And we still haven't got an answer. And this is Friday, today, 17th of April. Hopefully Monday, we will, have, we will be closer to solution. Have I answered your question, Jason? For sure. I mean, there there are uh, that that is uh, uh, speaking of one one issue. Certainly, there there are others. If, if I may ask, in, in the coming weeks, then what will what will be the priorities of Intermanager uh, to to help its members, and and why is the continuing partnership with others so important at this time? Okay, thanks for this. I will answer the second part first, because alone we can do nothing. We have to pull the resources. We have to work together. And more importantly, we need to listen. And that's what I like about our cooperation. We need to listen what others are telling us. Where are the challenges? We could be a, a you know, bull in a china shop, uh, rubbing elbows and saying, well, we need to do this, this and that. But we need to know what is the effect of our actions on others. And then when we listen, we can see, OK, maybe together we can pull this. Maybe we can solve that. Maybe we can achieve this one. Now, to, to come back to the first part of your question, I believe that we will be focusing on crew changes. This is the most important thing. We have already achieved a lot. We are talking about uh, certification, for example. Uh, ship certificates have been dealt with. Crew certificates have been dealt with. Uh, provision on board of the ships dealt with. So we are taking steps all the last three, four weeks. We have been taking steps and we solved a lot of solutions, uh, provided a lot of solutions, solved the problems. Now we need to concentrate on crew change. We are highly appreciative of our seafarers. We do understand that some of them are due to go home. Home is waiting for them. They want to support home as well. They want to come back. And now we've got an issue. Airlines, ports, authorities, and so on and so forth. So, I don't even have to have a crystal ball in front of me. I know that next few weeks, Jason, you, me, Natalie, Mark, I can name those guys, we will be working very, very hard to find a solution for seafarers to go home safely. A, a final question, if I may. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, you, you wrote this, and I know that you say this uh, regularly in, the meet, in, in meetings uh, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, uh, where I'm with you. Why is it important to continually, daily, say thank you to seafarers at this time? Well, there is a saying, seafarers are uh, out of mind, unfortunately, because they're out of sight. Many, many people do not realize how much we all owe to seafarers. This communication with me today is only possible because I've got a power supply. And how do I have power supply in the Isle of Man? Well, because of gas. How does the gas get here? Well, seafarers, I suppose. Okay, somebody may say, oh, wind farms. Very good. Who serves those wind farms? Seafarers. 
Did you have a milk in your tea this morning? Yes. Okay, on the Isle of Man, we've got our own milk. In US, probably you have old milk as well. But you need power supply to the, uh, the, the factories which are making everything. And um, so I see that you are wearing uh, uh, earphones. Very good. How did you get them from? Um, obviously, the ship brought it to you, and so on and so forth. So, yes, and, and seafarers are very, very rarely thanked for what they do. Uh, when did you see last time in your CNN or BBC or any other network anything about the ships? It's only when the disaster happens and we are the headline. But otherwise, we are so quiet behind the scenes, we just carry 90% of all cargoes. But I don't need to remind you and, and your audience, you guys know all of this and, and you are there. Now, before we finish, I would like to come back to what I said at the very beginning. Guys, you go on board of, your, of, of my ship, if you prefer, and you are delivering stuff which I wish I could. You are there with good uh, message, you are there with SIM card, you are there because somebody needs to go to doctors and needs support. Somebody just needs to talk to someone. And I wish I could be there for them, but I'm not. And this is where you guys are coming. You are local, you know your network, you are the guys who are solving a lot of our problems. So taking this opportunity, I would like to say thank you. I really, really appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Well, Captain Szymanski, thank you so much for uh, these few minutes together. It's been encouraging and informative, and thank you for the work that you do. And please uh, pass on our regards to your membership and uh, tell them that we are available to serve in any way we can. I really appreciate that, Jason. Thank you.